Hello there, short friends. Today I'm going to do another knife video because I asked in the previous knife video I made if you wanted to hear me ramble about fixed blade knives and, uh, and some of you unfortunately said yes. So I'm going to do that. Now, as you may see, I actually have a couple more uh, fixed blade knives, despite the fact I don't generally carry them or do much of anything with them. For some reason, they're more swordy. They're baby swords. So that's why I tend to tend to like them or have more of them, I guess. Anyway, uh, this will be particularly rambly because there, there was actually some good feedback from the previous knife video I made where I talked a little bit about the knives that I've, I've carried and I thought that added to the conversation. But apparently what I don't like and why I think something is stupid is equally valuable. So I will ramble about most of these knives and this is, this is going to be exceptionally long, most likely. It would be if it was about one knife. I could ramble for eternity about that. But I'm going to uh, make a couple quick touch points on, on a few of the various knives that... Uh, that I have. And the, the ones I actually want to start with are the pieces that I like the most, which are somewhere around here. So without uh, a whole lot of surprise, I don't honestly even know what all of these models and stuff are called. Some of you other knife folks out there probably know more about them than I do. This is an SOG knife, and I can't remember exactly how this came into my possession, but it is uh, something I think I got in a trade. No surprise, it's a drop point knife, rubber handle. Uh, something that I actually kind of like about this is the profile of the handle, which I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see here or not, but it's relatively kind of thin where the, the bolster is or where the guard is, and then it swells out a little bit, and it does actually feel pretty good in my hand. In terms of like kind of cheaper knives, and I don't know if this is a cheaper knife or not, but I believe it's kind of around the probably $30, $40 price point. Um, feels good in my hand and I, I certainly don't mind it. It's not particularly thick. It's it's a light kind of comfortable knife. Um, I don't mind it and I was actually kind of surprised at how, how comfortable it is in the hand. The little sheath leaves a little bit to be desired but I digress. It is, it is what it, for what it is, it's a haunting knife that I wouldn't mind bringing out if I go out camping or something like that and not one that I'm afraid of, of damaging, losing. Uh, basically it, it's served it's at a price point where it serves its purpose and it feels good in my hand. So this is actually one that I that I really happen to like. Um, as I move down the line on things that I happen to like and hold a special place in my heart, this is the the Buck 119, and it is a uh, a fixed blade knife that I I don't know that I could really articulate anything about beyond what you've probably heard. It's a prolific <laughs> knife out there. It's one of the more common pieces, and honestly, it's it's a fantastic knife. It's it's a little kind of bulky in my hand, but it definitely feels like you could pry and obviously for what it's intended for um, the the grip that in the purchase that you can get on the knife is is quite good it's not comfortable in like a defensive manipulating situation um, but in terms of like being able to really crank on something separating a hip bone if you're hunting is what somebody told me this does with deer quite well i don't happen to hunt myself so i wouldn't be able to tell you but uh it is a handsome knife it's in a cool uh, style and and honestly one thing that I really like about it is it's kind of dorky as it might sound is when I was a kid uh, we used to go up north and kind of there was this hardware store near where our family cabin was and uh, they had this kind of buck display case that you could see some of the knives and the 119 or maybe the 120 I can't remember if which which one was was there but there was a big honking kind of Bowie knife like this that uh, that I saw as a kid and I always wanted to get one but I could never afford it and now I'm a grown ass man and I totally can. So now I have a buck 119. I've always debated getting the 120, but frankly, I don't really use these for anything. I would say camping and that kind of thing, but I honestly, I don't camp. I ramble about swords in my basement and play video games. So not a whole lot of outdoor activity, as you may be able to tell by my very pasty complexion. Um, so camping, <laughs> don't, don't necessarily need one for camping. Uh, this anyway is a neat style. I like the way it feels. It's, you know, I've had actually a few different 119s. For some reason, I keep trading them and then giving them back. Uh, I can't say I mind it, though. They're, they're all very nice knives, and I, I would certainly get some high praise from me for what that's worth being a not knife guy. Okay, uh, this is one that I've, uh, another one, this is a Buck Alpha Hunter. And this one, as you can see, has, is a little worse for wear. And so when I'm mowing lawn and doing outdoor type activities and stuff like that, uh, and I'm in my backyard, which I guess is is a backyard I'm, I'm foresting i'm i'm camping in my backyard so to speak but uh this has been a handy handy tool i know it's a hunting knife and good for skinning and things like that but i happen to like these knives i like big bellies on a knife and this one in particular as dumb as it sounds is not just a box opener but when i need to separate labels <laughs> skinning a cardboard box so to speak as you might know 
I uh, buy, sell, trade quite a, few, quite a number of swords. And one thing I tend to do is uh, reuse the, the packing that I get because boxes, if you go buy them new or try to make them yourself, could be an expensive little thing to, to deal with and more of a pain in the ass. So I tend to reuse basically the boxes that I get. But I need to separate my address information and that stuff is on there good. And I can skin the label off there. And this, this big belly on here seems to work exceptionally well for that. Uh, it's easy to control the knife. It's, it's very good. And I've modified it with my... Uh, the utmost of my skills here and tied some shoelaces or something like that through here so I can mount it horizontally which is generally the way I prefer to carry a fixed blade knife is uh, along my back or along my belly in a horizontal configuration. All right, uh, next one that I happen to like is uh, is a Cold Steel SRK, I believe is is what it is. And I can't say that I've used this knife before, but I do really, really, really like it. And I got this in some sort of odd trade. It was one of these kind of going back and forth type deals where we just couldn't quite uh, see eye to eye on, on a price, but we were close. And the addition of this knife is what, uh, what sealed the deal on a sword purchase, I'm guessing, that I can't even remember. But that's how I got this, because I wouldn't generally buy a hundred dollar ish or more 200 i don't know how, even how much these things are uh, but it was in a neat profile and it seemed to be the tchotchke that i needed uh, to seal the deal on a different type sword purchase which is how i came to it it's a sanmai srk and uh and it's neat looking basically like you can very clearly see the kind of lamination line i think they've made a few different iterations of these knives over the years and i don't know uh, which version this one happens to be uh, but it has a kind of nice hollow ground uh, hollow ground edge. The the secondary bevel on here is, I don't know, either way, it's it's very sharp and I can make out kind of clearly the sanmai, the lamination. I can make it out along the spine and I can make it out very clearly along the edge. Uh, the grip is also nice. It's rubbery and that rubber always makes me think it's going to turn to squeedle over time. But for the moment, it seems actually like a very comfortable, it's an aggressive, cool looking knife. Um, it's a little too expensive for me to use though. Uh, and so I've always thought about what I'm going to do with this. I haven't really liked the profile, but it's it's too expensive for me to do much of anything with. And it's, I don't know, it's a little bigger and less controllable. It's in a style that I like. If I were to go glamping or something, maybe I would, I would take it along. But again, at the price point it is, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'll probably end up selling it at some point. Uh, the, the thing is, I do really, really like the way it feels. Uh, it's rubber grip, things like that. There are a lot of redeeming things about this particular knife that I happen to, to like. It's uh, the way it retains in the in the kydex case here it holds in really well it requires quite a quite a little push to take off but you know in a pinch you'd be able to uh, to pull it out it releases easy enough it feels good in the hand the rubber hasn't turned to spongy squeedle yet it's very sharp and in a, in a good profile i imagine this would be um if i had cause to use a knife like this more more commonly this would would be something i would very strongly consider on the alternative end of that the last one that I'll show you that I actually really, really like is, and is, was, and definitely continues to be really about the only custom knife that I own out of, out of the lot. I have a lot of custom swords, but I don't have a lot of custom knives. Uh, not that I don't respect the makers, but I've, I've talked about this in the earlier video. I tend to prefer to spend my money on swords. I don't usually use knives in the, in the martial arts that I practice. There are some knife related things, uh, but I don't, I don't tend to use them very often and I prefer to carry uh, to, to spend money on swords. Anyway, I digress. The point is this knife is made by Ed Martin. I believe he's a knife maker out of Texas. And again, this one came up for sale on Sword Buyer's Guide some years ago. And I think it was in the same type of thing. I, I got this as part of a sword related deal and it just, I don't know, it, it ended up working out. Uh, in, in retrospective, the, um, the gentleman that was selling these had three or four of them. And I kind of wish I had bought all three or four of them because they are fantastic. This is kind of the first knife that I've had that is, well, it's not the first custom knife I have or the only one because I've had Mike Curley make some kitchen knives and whatnot. But um, in terms of like, you know, not actually practical, useful <laughs> knives that I carry around with me or use in the kitchen or something like that, uh, in terms of like bushcrafty type knives, this is the, the only custom iteration that I have. It comes with some, you know, it's got a uh, fire starter, a magnesium block, a little sharpening stone, uh, a little kydex case that you can carry horizontally or vertically. Um, anyway, overall nice knife, but just the way this feels in my hands is absolutely fantastic. It fits my stupid sausage fingers exceptionally well. It feels really comfortable uh, to, to use if I were to, you know, the downside is that this is a really expensive knife as well, and so I've always been hesitant about doing anything with it. Um, I don't carry it around, but I've, I've I don't know. 
I've thought about trading it, selling it, doing something like that. It just happens to really speak to me as a fantastic feeling knife, and it's one of my favorites, and I, I, for some reason this little simple knife here is the one I happen to like, like the most. It'd be nice if I didn't just have a, a case that um, was carried this way. You know, I, it, it is somewhat limiting, like it's, it's a lot of stuff, but I don't really bushcraft or start fires other than my backyard. I have, frankly, I use a plumbing torch to start most of the fires because it's more convenient. Um, but we're at a camp and have use of something like this more. I, I really like it and I just happen to really, really like the style of knife. I've thought also about having a different case made that might fit it a little better. Anyway, this is, I think probably my favorite knife out of the the myriad of things that you're going to to see here. I really, really happen to actually like this one. Uh, the last one, actually, I, there is one more that I tend to use, and it's going to maybe draw, uh, uh, you know, crop. I don't know. It'll it can of worms anyway. This is an angel sword knife. This is a buccaneer knife. Uh, you can see I've got a little rubber band wrapped around it. This is an exceptionally sharp knife, and they sharpen them at the Ren Fest for free. If I don't know if it ever happens to go again. It's a blocky kind of goofy knife, um, but again, drop tip style. It has a pattern on the surface of the steel, which is interesting, at least to me, but it's a very sharp knife. It's a little shallow itty bitty thing. And uh, because they repair and sharpen and you can always trade them in, despite the fact that it's a relatively expensive knife, I think in like two or 300 bucks or something like that. Um, I don't really mind using it or degrading it because I can trade it in towards something else. Anyway, uh, it, I do happen to like it. It's it's blocky, and that's one of the reasons I have this little rubber band here. Uh, if I'm poking at something, this just gives me the extra little bit of purchase that I need on, on the knife. And anyway, that's why it's there. Uh, the case that it originally came with wasn't great, and so a different one of my knives came with this one, and it happens to fit a lot better. Uh, so I do I do like this one. I would say I actually use this angel sword knife quite quite a bit in terms of just general box opening you know, sits around, it's a handy knife to, to have. But uh, yes, this is kind of my, one of my default box openers while I'm at home. Okay, so I think that about wraps up the, the knives that I actually enjoy using and, uh, or, or like for some various reason. You can kind of see they're all bushcrafty, campy, hunting type knives, and those are the ones that I tend to like the most. But I obviously have a smattering of other things here, and I'll get to talking about them. Um, I do want to point out two other kind of runner-ups in terms of useful utility. All right, two little runner-ups in terms of utility. These are two little CRKT small knives. One, this is the minimalist. Again, very nice knife for, for being exactly what it is. I love the way this rests between my fingers. It feels really good, and if I were doing any tasks like box opening or prying things, uh, like labels and stuff off of boxes, which is generally what I tend to use little bits like this for. Anyway, it's it's very handy. I can't say that this um, neck holster that I happen to have for it is particularly handy, and it certainly um, could be modified to be put on something else. I just really haven't. Uh, but it is a nice little knife, and I really like the way it rests in my hand. And this little kind of lanyard bit that goes off, um, I can hold it, and it gives me something to grab onto on my pinky. So even though there's there's nothing there, it's just these top three fingers. Uh, this lanyard lets me kind of hold on something with my with my pinky finger, and the jimping towards the the back or the spine area really makes this feel like a secure knife. And so if you're whittling, prying, doing I don't know whatever task you might not need a knife bigger than this for, uh, this is remarkably controllable and a very 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 comfortable little knife to have. I, I really enjoy it. I just haven't really honestly found causes to use it. Uh, I'm used to prying labels and stuff off with my Buck Alpha Hunter, and it's dulled and messy, and I just haven't haven't done it with this one. Plus, again, the holster bit. Uh, this is the CRKT Spew. Uh, you know, honestly, I like I like it because it's little. I like it because it has this little vertical mounting plate on it where you can carry it kind of vertically on your or horizontally on your belt. Um, overall, I, I like the knife, but it is little and dainty and delicate and, and easy to kind of bend the tip and stuff. So it's bitty. It feels also controllable in my hand. I got this one actually first before I got the Minimalist. I think I prefer the Minimalist over this little Spew. I think that's what it is. Anyway. There we go, CRKT. Honorable mentions, because I, I do happen to like those little little bitty things. I have some other neck knives here, or easily mountable ones. This is a dainty, tactical CRKT something. Um, honestly, don't, don't particularly like it. It feels slippery, and it has a, a profile that seems indicative to stabby, stab, stab. I suppose you could kind of do the reverse grip and stabby stab stab this way but I don't know this this seems more tactical than uh, than anything else to me and I don't I don't particularly 
uh, particularly like it. Um, I don't know what this bit is. It's a Karam bit, but I couldn't tell you who it's made by, and it's a little, I, I don't know, honestly, this scares me a little bit. I didn't, I did train in Filipino martial arts for a time, uh, but this little uh, bitty thing here on, scares me more than anything else. I don't know, I, yeah, I'm probably gonna just cut myself using it. It's too small for me to, to practically do much of anything with. And then I have this other throwy necky, it's not even worth talking about. Why isn't it worth talking about, Matt? Because that's, you said you'd ramble. Um, it's cheap, and I don't know. It doesn't seem particularly useful. Um, I can't, as a small knife to like do tooly things with, I can't put my thumb on it because it's got two sides. I can use it this way, and it's good, but I don't know. Like it doesn't feel terribly secure. And as, I don't know, it's like a throwing knife. Or I don't know what the fuck you would actually even use this for. It doesn't seem very controllable. It's not very comfortable to hold. And if I hold it this way, I feel like I'm going to lose it between my the flub of my hands and I'm going to stab myself and cut my hands open. So I don't find this particularly good. Last little tactical kydexy crap. I got this thing. It's not bad. It's light. I can imagine it's uh, comfortable if weight is a concern, but honestly, um, not particularly comfortable. It's very, very sharp. This HK something something. Um, not not my favorite just more or less because it's light and i have other options that are light and kind of if i want something small uh, that functions really well then i have other options and i don't need the extra length of blade uh, it's not particularly stout at the end and so you know anyway it's in a chisel style grind as well so there's no there's only a single bevel on one side it's interesting as a knife but that's about the nicest i can say about it from a practical standpoint i don't have cause to use it and i can't see myself carrying it because the extra ounces that i might save using having this um i I'd probably just carry something else. All right, so you might notice towards the top here, there are some various uh, cookeries here. And these are cookeries from Nepalese Cookery House. And if you haven't seen them, as, as I understand it, they're still producing knives and such, and they are of a reasonable quality. They are thick, big, honking cookeries. Uh, as I understand it, they're handmade in Nepal, and they're not terribly expensive if you want to get one. So I would, I would certainly encourage you to try one if you are so inclined. They're not at a price point that is prohibitive. Um, and the quality has has been pretty good all of the examples i have are second hand and um, the person that had it before me clearly used used it and sharpened it and it, it's it's still straight <laughs> it's, but it's it's a honking axe of a knife these are very thick very beefy pieces and honestly i can't say i'm a big fan of the cookery this um kind of handle at the base here I'm, maybe i'm just using it wrong but when i throw it out there if i make contact with anything uh, these little brass bits down at the bottom want to run into the flub of my hand and i can't say that it's ever a particularly comfortable experience to use one of these knives and i have um, a couple examples albeit from the same manufacturer so nepalese cookery house again you can see maybe the uh the nkh on the stamped on the side here this is a smaller one even more uncomfortable it's not so bad if i hold it just just thusly, but as soon as I really make contact with anything, it just jams that, that little nubbin piece into the fat of my hand. So not a particularly comfortable thing, but these are very robust and big honking knives. Um, I have never had cause to really use them, but uh, they are cool as hell. <laughs> There's something about them that is just beefcakey, giant neatness. And here's a marginally cleaner one. Can't say if you do get one that this is really worth it. Maybe you like this kind of brass adornment here, but it feels uh, cheaper. The the kind of patterning and stuff isn't necessarily bad, but it's almost like not secured and has to separate and split as I put the uh, cookery in here. I can kind of feel it, you know, it's <laughs> held together by pressure or something. Uh, the leather she's give me a better impression than, than this one does. It's more elaborate, but I, I honestly don't think it's worth it. And the wood has diminished and chipped in some ways. Uh, these little bitty knives tend to come with them as well, and they're neat, but I, I can't say I've ever used one. In fact, I've lost most of them. Uh, some other bits. Cookery-wise, um, there's, you know, I have some things like this. I much prefer the handle. This basically is like a cookery-style shape, but it removes all of the fun of the cookery. It doesn't have the same weight or balance. It's just a, a hollow representation of, of what the cookery is, and I don't even know who or what this is. I'm just going to stop talking about it. But this one is another example of a cookery-style knife from K-Bar, and it is... Uh, 
yeah, what is it? It's the 1249. I don't know if that is what that is. But anyway, it is a cookery style with a different handle. I much prefer the handle, but again, it's lost some of the uh, zazz of the handmade cookeries from the Nepalese cookery house. And so while it is a cookery in kind of backup aesthetic, it, it it isn't at the same time. It has forward momentum. It's a lot more controllable, a lot more kind of mobile, but at the same time, it doesn't have the axy presence <laughs> of the cookery. Um, and so while I prefer it, the handle is round, but this kind of forward weight of the blade uh, makes it very apparent where the edge is supposed to be. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be confused by the handle despite it being, you know, almost almost a pipe. Anyway, uh, again, can't say I particularly like this. I, for some reason, even though the Nepalese cookery house pieces are want to bite my hands and I can't say they're fun to use, they are just uh, very cool knives to me. I happen to really think they're neato. Here's another one. I guess I have four. Did I already show this one? No. Yes? Yes. Oh, I got two of these, I guess. There we go. There's another one. And again, right in the flow of my hand. Cool as hell knife, but just not doesn't doesn't like me back okay um these are cold steel shadow something somethings shanghai showdown that sounds racist but uh anyway uh neat little um neat little knives they're sharp but that's honestly about as much as i can say and they're lighter than they look i would have thought these were giant beefy heavy knives they're not and they have uh, as i recall a nice little ting oh you're not hearing it Never mind, they don't. Uh, that said, I don't know if these are, I, I can't remember exactly how or why I got these. I don't particularly like them though. That's that's the end, end result of it. I'm sure they're good. I just can't think of a particularly practical application. Oh, this one does the ring maybe. Kind of, sort of, okay. Well, the point is I can't really think of a practical use for this knife. Not that I have to find a practical use for every knife, but just this in particular doesn't seem uh, terribly useful maybe in, in some sort of martial arts aspect or defensiveness but i i don't know it seems like a cumbersome awkward uh knife to use and i I prefer prefer a different example moving on so we've got a cold steel drop forged piece uh, this is really odd in the hand it feels hefty in the grip more than anything else so it feels like a weight in your hand because it is um, but a lot of it is in the grip, so the point of balance is nimble, but anyway, it is a confusing and uncomfortable knife to me. Uh, again, in terms of cold steel knives, they are sharp and hold up reasonably well. This one, again, was used before I got it, and the, the plating and stuff along the edge has held up well, despite what has been some apparent use. I've dropped it a few times, and it's held up all in all pretty well. It's just not a particularly comfortable knife, and in Minnesota, where I happen to live, this would be a very uncomfortable <laughs> handle to hold on to. Uh, were I to use it outside because it would freeze and my hand would probably get stuck to it. Um, so maybe in warmer climates it's an appropriate thing, but it does feel like a, just a strange a strange knife. I'm sure there's some sort of purpose behind drop forging a knife and making it all out of one piece. Uh, just not not my favorite option. Maybe in a zombie apocalypse where you, know, you want to have things last for hundreds of years. Uh, other little bits. These are from a knife maker that's local to Minnesota. I got them as a very belated wedding present. I wish I knew who actually made them, um, but they, you can see kind of the, the bolster areas here and the, the metal, like it's basically got some patina. I think there's some etchant or something like that residue left over in the scabbards that, uh, or, or sheaths that are causing it to patina and it gets my hands full, full of gunk. So I don't tend to use them very much, but they are my style and ergonomic and I do like them for what they are, particularly this uh, one here. It has like some narrowing down at the base and the way my pinky rest in it just it feels very very controllable very controllable and very nice uh, unfortunately they're a little thick and not terribly sharp and i don't know but i do like them they were a wedding present and i'm i'm grateful to have them this is an odd one as well a scottish dirk that i got when i was in the uk and uh i believe i paid like 40 pounds for this ridiculous little stainless steel knife and i want to say I, I can't remember it was like fort augustus some tchotchke shop in scotland outside at inverness i think um, anyway, it was a handy knife to have when I was in the UK for a time, but obviously it's not terribly, well, honestly, I don't know much about it <laughs> other than it's not terribly well made. The sheath doesn't seem particularly useful and it has a little cap uh, that has come unglued a few times. Uh, as it is, I'm not overly confident in how well it is built either, how far down this tang goes into the knife. I'm suspecting though, not terribly far. So 
it hasn't it hasn't seen much of any kind of use but it is an interesting memento from from the time some people buy glasses or spoons i buy knives uh, this is a bit of an heirloom knife that i don't get to use it has uh, a loosened pommel area here and the leather uh, kind of bits in between here are starting to come undone but this is my grandfather's knife and my father used it after that and uh, i'm not sure how old it is it's nothing particularly special but i keep it around maybe one day i'll try to fix it or clean it up uh, lastly i have a couple others this is i want to say the moonshiner from condor knives i'm not entirely sure um something like that anyway it's a big honking knife it says El Salvador, but that might be where it's made rather than the model number. Not entirely sure. Anyway, really like the style of knife. It's like a handheld machete axe type thing. Uh, I prefer this in lieu of, honestly, a cookery. Um, this is about more my speed if I want something big and heavy. It's large, imposing, uh, has a nice big belly on it. I feel it's more controllable and it doesn't bite me when I swing at things. The cookeries aren't much cooler looking though. If I needed axe related things, the cookery would be a winner. Uh, this is a, a Hibben Knives. I don't really honestly know much about it. It's folded in, I don't know, it's like a, a functional collectible meh. To me it doesn't do a whole lot and it's kind of dorky in the hand. Um, maybe this is even more of a sort. But as a Bowie knife goes, it's, it's alright. It's the Musso style Bowie with, uh, with some folding that I guess makes things cool. But it looks like kind of meh type folding and the scabbard or sheath doesn't really, doesn't do a lot for me. This, on the other hand, is a Gen 2 uh, Muso Bowie. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but I actually happen to like this. And it bears a striking similarity in terms of uselessness and appearance that the previous Bowie that I just showed you did. But this one I actually happen to like a little bit more. Um, the way this stuff is fit doesn't have uh, ledges and stuff that would get caught if you actually had it on a belt. Um, the knife actually fits in pretty secure. It doesn't fall out, but it draws easily. The belt hanging system is, is useful. It has a little button here to keep it from coming completely loose and having you with a sharp blade pointed at your, you know, soft bits. Uh, it's a wood case, which is fine, I suppose, for a knife like this. It's big and honking. This uh, brass bit at the base has been tested by the previous owner to catch blades. So supposedly that might be what some of these brass bits at the back were. I guess there's some questions around what were these actually used for. Some said it was softer so it could deflect knives or grip in a bind. Um, some people thought maybe it just looked cool. I, I don't know. I don't can't, can't say I know what this is, but the previous owner said there did not tend to be much of any particular usefulness in the bind. Uh, so as it is though, this is a very comfortable knife. I like the way this grip feels. It, it rests in my hand really well. It's pretty thick but I can index it well, I can know where the edge is, and it's just a, a very handsome, large, big Bowie knife. And this, I think, also happens to be one, one of my favorites in lieu of a Kukri. I'd rather have one of these. Doesn't bite me in my hand, has some of the same large imposing things, but it's also not, uh, you know, supposed to double as an axe. Anyway, those are some of the uh, knives that I have. All right, sword friends, it's time for me to wrap things up. Hopefully the video has been somewhat interesting. If there's any fixed blade in particular that you found interesting and would like me to ramble about more, please let me know in the commentary down below, and I will endeavor to do so in a way similar to how I have done so with swords, because at least there is more similarities between some of these larger knives than uh, and swords than some of the foldy pocket knife type stuff. So anyway, that's what I've got. Hopefully, again, it's been interesting. As always, cheers, and thanks for watching.